Welcome back, everybody. It is the Working Brother back at you with another talk. Drago Bosnic is back with us for the almost weekly, weekly updates of uh, news articles he's written. Drago, welcome back. Great being here as always. Uh, how are you doing? How's life? Uh, what has been going on in the past not so weak week that we haven't talked? Well, there's been a lot of things, uh, more than I thought it would be. So I guess we have a lot to talk about. Um, yeah, we've got a couple of uh, good articles that you've written, and we've got a couple of memes. Well, actually, more than a couple. I've got a, like a ton of memes. Um, for everybody who's new here, like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Um, don't forget, this is a comedy show. Nothing here is serious. Everything is just a joke and parody and satire, and nothing has to do with reality. Uh, uh, you can also find The Working Brother on Buy Me a Coffee if you like and patreon thank you to the new patreons actually should we discuss that first or should we do an article of yours how do you feel should we do a meme should yeah, we do a meme? do a meme let's do a meme uh this is france attacking russia as shared by pepe escobar <laughs> <laughs> oh man it's uh it's hilarious i mean it's, it's just um uh-huh. you know, Actually, it, it is true. It, you know, it's not even a, a, like like a meme if you really think about it. Because I remember like two years ago when they were talking about uh, you know the the SMO starting, they said the the French military said we can't hold ninety kilometers of a front line, and as far as I know, the the front line in Ukraine is thirteen hundred kilometers. So like that's five to seven percent of the front line that they would have hold. So like they wouldn't even be in addition to the Ukrainians, let alone like a force that the Russians should be, you know, afraid of. So it's it's ridiculous. But you're saying you're saying the like French fast reaction force that's planned for Odessa but has no <laughs> hope, basically. That's yeah. what I'm hearing. I mean, they could uh, go to Odessa because it's not in Russian hands at, at, at present. They could be there, you know, and, and get blown up by Durant drones and cruise missiles if that's what they prefer, you know. But if they really want to fight the Russians. They should go, you know, to the um, Harrison region or Donbass, maybe, you know, they're going to win there 100 percent. I mean, the Russians are losing all the time. I mean, they keep losing, but advancing. But, you know, still, it's like we keep saying they're losing forward. It's just like Putin, Putin, Putin lost in the elections because the elections weren't fair because he only got like 80 or 70 something percent or like whatever. But anyway, we'll get to the Russian elections later. Uh, Let's not forget about Gaza because the French cartoons or French uh, newspaper Liberation, Liberation, Liberation. You gotta, you gotta like, like put an onion in your mouth and then speak. And it's like French Liberation. (laughs) Um, In any case, um, they're mocking the Muslims of Gaza during the holy month of Ramadan for uh, having been starved already. Now that that's out of the way. (laughs) Freedom and democracy, man. Freedom and democracy. Singapore is the first... uh, (laughs) Joke of the day. I mean, article that you wrote about. Uh, by the way, on a side note, uh, to subscribers who may have heard of Defense Politics Asia, Defense Politics Asia um, has shown his uh, side that he supports Israel, so he's no longer a friend of the show, to put it shortly. Him being from Singapore, that's why I bring it up. Um, in any case, tell us about the Singapore, uh, was it the president? I think it was the president. Defense Minister, and I'm not going to even try to pronounce his name because I'm going to butcher it and I, I wouldn't want to do that. Um, I mean, I know how it's spelled, but I'm not sure about the pronunciation. Uh, so what actually happened is that Singapore is trying to buy additional F-35s. They already are uh, like, a, like a client state um, that has uh, bought F-35Bs, and this is the F-35A, which is a variant for the Air Force. And uh, one of the reasons why, why actually this happened is their defense minister tried to justify the, you know, the purchase of the F-35s, which are extremely expensive. You know, apart from being um, incredibly good jets, they're also very expensive. Um, so, uh, of course, the jokes aside, except the, the, the expensive part, he was trying to justify that. And uh, 
um, he wanted to say why they're so good, you know. And one of the things he said is that they are being used to hunt down Russian air defense systems in Ukraine. Uh, because, you know, one of the actually, and I'm not even being um, sarcastic now, one of the actually good traits of the F-35s is its, are its sensors. So it has very good sensors that, can, that are used to uh, for these CAD missions or suppression of enemy air defenses. And then they relay this for information to the Ukrainians, and then Ukrainians, you know, shoot missiles or drones or rockets at these Russian air defense systems. So essentially he had to, he revealed that in order to justify you know, the, the purchase of the F-35s because they are so good, right? Um, and in that way, he inadvertently, you know, revealed what's going on. Of course, the Pentagon said, oh, we had nothing to do with it. You know, like, this is just something that, um, you know, the Singaporean defense minister said, and we cannot comment on it. So, you know, I'm actually thinking two things. He either said that inadvertently or he, the Americans knew that and told him to say that because that's going to be, you know, like a good marketing for the F-35s for other countries. So like either of those two are equally possible, I would say. I'd say that's Russian propaganda and you have no idea what you're talking about. And uh, you sound like Alex Jones talking about gay chemicals and frogs. That's what you sound like. Uh, <laughs> I'll take that as a compliment. <laughs> right right uh, <laughs> basically that's what it boils down to um let's uh, let's do one of these i got i got this one from the instagrams um have you been mocking us since the beginning of recorded civilization yes <laughs> <laughs> pretty much we'll get to some uh, more serious topics in a bit but um yeah let's see what else drago has written up here oh we mentioned this in passing last time i knew we'd get around to talking about this uh yeah. new nato airbase in albania shows its members are effectively satellite states you mean uh, airports they're airports yeah pretty <laughs> much pretty much you know i would actually like to give a shout out to uh the national meme coordination uh body as it's translated to serbian uh, because one of the things they mentioned, it's, it's a very interesting thing, uh, they mentioned that this base um, is going to be like a, um, like a reserve base for the NATO forces from the Bonstil area in, uh, Serbian, in NATO-occupied Serbian province of Kosovo, uh, you know, for them to get away from there and so they can go to Albania, you know, if things um, not, don't, don't go as planned for them. So it's an interesting take, you know. I my you know my point in the article was a bit different. I essentially just said that this is a way for the for NATO to have you know bases closer to Russia and Serbia, which are going to be used for bombers and reconnaissance aircraft and you know fighter jets. Uh, but uh, you know I I like their take a lot more. I mean the national coordination uh, meme coordination body. Uh, they, their take is a lot more optimistic. Um. This is uh, Drago's article, and uh, we've got another meme. I was actually going to do a shout-out to the National Meme Coordination Body. Uh, anyway, regardless of, regardless of what you were saying, uh, this is their, their, their meme after Putin won about the Russian libs and uh, Pyotr Nikitin <laughs> in, in Belgrade. Um, and regarding uh, that, we've actually got where, – where is that? Can I, can I get that with one click? Nope. I can't get it with one click. Oh, this is good. Um, Peter Nikitin, who was at the polling stations in New Belgrade all day today at the improvised booth near the place where Belgrade, where in Belgrade Russians came to vote in the presidentials in Russia, shouted, Putin is a killer, and tried to get people to whistle at Putin. After that, an elderly man from the crowd came along and slapped him with a passport. That's what it says. I know what it says. He slapped him with a Russian passport. So... Yes. Yeah, I, I, I love that he did it with a passport. It's such a great message. I, I think so, too. Yes, it is, it is perfect. Um, now, let me find that other thing with the statistics. Where is it? Why is it not here? Wait, oh, about there the we election? go. Yes, the election statistics. Yeah, it's 87.21%, I think, on the whole. And there was like, a, the turnout was 77.5, something like that. This is, this is... This is the foreign or expat Russians voting, oh, yeah. and uh, and this is in Serbia with 67% voting for not Putin. <laughs> Let's put it that way, Davanko. No, the craziest part is that like 
he has more votes in Lithuania than here. It's it's kind of embarrassing. <laughs> 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 You're saying Putin has more votes in Lithuania than he does here? For yeah, real, I huh? mean, it's, it's not really like if it were Serbian votes, he would get like 115%. But, but it, it, it's, not. <laughs> it's, it's the, the votes of all these lifters who, you know, fled Russia. 100, 115%? What are you trying to say about our election system? Uh, <laughs> 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 comedy show comedy show nothing yeah. to do with reality um new nato airbase uh what else have we got here missiles near russia yeah. f-35s uh, with thermonuclear bombs is nato ready for war no they're not ready but they are asking for it tell us more <laughs> yeah yeah that's a good you essentially summed it up um, well, you know, one of the things I covered there is that they're moving a lot of these Patriot missile systems uh, into the Baltic area. And I mean, it's not just the Patriots. There are other air defense systems, such as the Aegis system, which is a lot more longer. Uh, it's a, a longer range system than the Patriot. And it's it's a bigger threat uh, in that regard. Uh, however, those are like defensive systems that can be used in an offensive way. But the F-35s with nuclear bombs, that, that's a problem. And you know, as I said, the F-35, even though it's it's a subpar jet, you know, for its generation, um, still it can carry nuclear weapons. And and the thing is, you know, they are very close to the, these important Russian areas in the northwest, including, of course, St. Petersburg, the second most important city in Russia. So um, what they're doing now, they're arming them with B-6112 and B-6113 bombs, and, and the latter, the 13th variant, it has like a 350 kil kiloton yield, which is like around 23 to 25 times uh, more destructive than the Hiroshima bomb. So, you know, uh, it, it is a problem, of course, for the Russians because it gives America strike capabilities that are, you know, far greater than the Russians had in Cuba 60 years ago. So, um, you know, it's, it's not something that should be ignored. And this is precisely why you know, we're in a situation where things could escalate fast because the Russians will not tolerate, you know, the amassing of so many, you know, strike forces so close to one of their most important areas. Um, and you know what I noticed that the Russians have been doing in response, or maybe preemptively? They've started exporting jam. This is, uh, this is the aircraft jamming navigation of the Russian uh, oh, yeah. Kalini Kaliningrad region which has yeah. been, uh, you know, active in exporting jam from the Russian Federation. Yeah. That Russian jam. It's excellent, you know. I've actually had some Russian jam when I was in Russia. Did I tell you all I was in Russia and like more than a year ago? Did I show you the video? Oh, we'll do the video later, maybe. Um, let's do another meme from forever ago. Come on, meme, change over to next meme. Why? Why won't it change? There we go. The CDC, their logo now makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Teoreticar uh, Istine for that one. And uh, let's get back to another article. Neo Nazi, neo nuts, fans of nuts. Junta now after three million childless Ukrainian women. What? Yeah, fans of new nuts. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, um, it, it, it's precisely what it says. Um, there was this uh, uh, Ukrainian publication called Texty, uh, which uh, like analyzed how they could increase the number of uh, you know uh, on-duty soldiers. And they thought that three million childless women, I mean, women who have, haven't been married and don't have any kids, you know, are a great source for cannon fodder, I guess. Um, I think I think I think I saw that article. I think uh, it might be the same article that we discussed uh, when I was a guest on XF uh, Hawkins Live. Yeah, and XF actually posted it. Yeah. And, and th this is why I analyzed it. And it's, it's insane. The 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 article the the article actually like starts off making you think like they're gonna like pull these women to like save them and save the population of Ukraine, yeah. but then but then they're like basically like oh these three million women can replenish the reserves the reserves yeah. <laughs> like what? Yeah, 
<laughs> replenish yeah, the reserves. It's just insane, you know. I mean, they they also analyze other you know parts of Ukrainian demographics, which could be used, you know, to replenish the, the ranks. Uh, but but this is what caught my attention because you know other stuff is crazy because they're also talking about people with disabilities. And we all know, like we've seen a, lot, a bunch of videos where people with all, all sorts of mental and physical disabilities are being pushed, pressed into service. You know, like guys with, with no hands or people who are blind or, you know, people with Down syndrome or something like that. It's, it's just insane, uh, you know, that you would do something like that. And I remember there was one a case where they were abusing guy. I'm not sure if he had a, a Down syndrome or something else, but they were straight up abusing the guy because he couldn't, you know, understand that he shouldn't be holding a grenade I mean, there are standards in the military that are not going to, you know, that, that serve the purpose of you not, in, not getting killed by your own weapons, you know, and this is why people with Down syndrome are not invited to the military. So, uh, and, and they think, okay, you know, let's use these people as cannon fodder, you know, and, and, and then they're abusing them because they can't, you know, figure out how to throw a grenade. So it's, um, you know, I, I don't know how to describe it, except it's, it's, it's satanic. Um... Yeah, it stopped being ridiculous a long time ago. Now it's just pure, yeah. like, evil. It's even yeah. beyond evil. It's, like you say, satanic. Um, but that's a good segue for... Because uh, you brought that up, that article up. Um, I can do, like, a little self-promo uh, for Patreon. And we can play this 2 minute and 30 second preview of that talk that... <clears throat> that talk that I had with... Um, XF, also known as Hawkin. Um, we just—he asked me if I was head of uh, of a Russian Navy ship that was being attacked by naval drones, or was or had already been attacked by naval drones. What would I do, and how would I handle the situation? Also, everybody who's new here, uh, you may have noticed my camera glitching. It does that sometimes. Um, get used to it. People who are here are like 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 the technical difficulties. Um, so let's have a listen. I don't know what is making noise on your side, Drago, but I'm gonna mute you for a second. Um, uh, let's see what. Yeah, let's see what this uh, preview sounds like. Shit going on. What would you guess? Well, I'd uh, I'd I don't want to guess. You know, but uh, if I was there, you know, if I was yeah, in charge thing, yeah, of some if you were there, same ship, yeah. If I if I was in charge of some ship that got attacked and got hit, um, I don't think other than like his, I doubt that there is a doctrine or that there is like awareness. By the way, people, sooner or later, we're definitely going to have merch, and it's definitely going to be like, um... <laughs> that's, that, that's definitely going to be on the merch. While, while we're trying to avoid the YouTube censorship. <laughs> of the possibility of this amongst the, you know, regular Navy uh, in, in, in the Russian Black Sea Fleet, or in any Navy nowadays, you know what I mean? Like, I don't think there's like a drill for an all-hands-on-deck every single... Uh, a long gun that you have including your pistol if you haven't got a rifle start shooting at whatever's on the water you know what i mean i don't think that there's a drill like that that's been uh you know practiced enough times in uh, in the in the russian navy and more than that i don't think there's any kind of procedure of like you know we're getting attacked by drones um we should do X, Y, and Z, you know, or we should turn on this or we like, and on top of that, I think there's definitely a lacking in mechanical or physical um, defense that could be, um, you know, used at the end of the day, just to make an inflatable. Um, we'll leave that there. We don't want to bore people, especially not Drago. Cause he is the guest, but Drago, let us know. What do you think? I was just going to get into uh, ways of defending it, but why don't you leave that aside and we'll play that in a bit and tell us what do you think you would do if, like, you know, your ship was getting attacked? Like, how, how, like 
what do you, do you do you see like i discussed there that i don't think that there's any kind of protocol for dealing with these kind of things like on all navy ships do you think something like that is necessary oh wait i have to unmute you wait 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 yeah, yeah there you go all right sorry is, is, the, is the noise gone because i'm not really sure where yeah yeah no going. the noise is gone the noise is gone okay great um well you know the the inflatable part is a better solution than uh, when I was thinking, I was thinking about, you know, uh, putting some netting, you know, just like on tanks that would uh, just catch the, you know, the drone and, and, you know, there wouldn't be like an explosion that could, that would breach the hull. Um, however, the, I think the inflatable part is better because, you know, you can just uh, deploy it and undeploy it while if, if you install a netting, it's always going to have to be there. And it's also going to mess up your uh, radar cross section, you know. And a lot of these new ships are made in such a way that you know that they are radar evading, uh, so that you know that they reduce the, not, the the possibility of detection. So you know it's it's very difficult for you to put anything on them without messing up the radar cross section. Um, it's not only about the radar cross section, but if you're like installing a permanent net around the ship, you're definitely going to make it slower because it's got to pull that net exactly. through the water. Exactly. There's going to be more drag, essentially. So, so you're, as you said, you're, it's going to be. And I mean, the, the same. It's, it's the same with inflatable uh, defenses. However, as I, as I said, that you can deploy them and undeploy them. However, the question is like, how much time will you have to deploy the the inflatable defenses? You know, before you actually detect the drone. Um, you know, in, in general. What I really think about modern day um, naval combat is that uh, surface ships are becoming obsolete because there are so many ways <laughs> to destroy them. Are, are, you, are you sure? Are you, are you sound like one of those guys from like 10 years ago or 15 years ago who was like, tanks are becoming obsolete. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, the, a, a lot of these things which can be destroyed by drones have become obsolete, although there are ways when you sh in which you can defend tanks, which is the case with the new T-80 BBM which got additional armor and it, you know, it's proven to be very effective against drones. However, a ship is a different breed, you know, like a ship it has to be light enough to go fast. If you put too much armor on it, it's going to become too heavy and it's going to become, you know, a logistical nightmare. So, um, because it's going to have a reduced range unless it's a nuclear powered ship. So, you know, either way, it, surface ships are, are just such a sitting duck, you know, because it's not just about drones. Like, even if you can, if you could create like perfect defense against drones, what are you going to do against all these anti-ship missiles, which have, you know, essentially made surface competence, uh, large surface competence, um, or capital ships, if you want, essentially obsolete, like 50 years ago. People don't even know that uh, the Soviet Union and later Russia developed some anti-ship missiles, which are absolutely insane. Like, for example, P-800 Onyx. Uh, the Ukrainians have have complained that they haven't shot down one a single one like of hundreds. I think around 300, uh, 300 have been shot. You know, have been fired uh, by the Russian military. So and the Navy. Uh, so so and they haven't shot down a single one. So like and those are like in land attack roles. And can you imagine a ship? Because the Onyx is primarily an anti ship missile. So it's it's Mach two point six. I think it has a five hundred kilometer warhead. So how are you going to stop that thing? How are you going to shoot it down? And and the crazy part is uh, the same platforms that can fire the Onyx, they can fire the Zircon, the Zircon hypersonic missile, which is also anti-ship missile um, primarily. So it's a Mach 9, and uh, you know it doesn't even need a warhead. Like like the, the speed is such that the kinetic energy is going to cut your ship in half. You know, so like how can you defend against that? Like the only um, viable naval strategy I see is subs. You know, submarines are still you know viable because they are underwater and they, they can conceal much easier. You know, it's harder to um, sink them. Uh, surface combatants don't have that luxury. Yeah, what can I say? Drone warfare in the naval sphere is going to get interesting. Let's listen into the second half of that uh, preview. Um, but first of all, let's look at this meme because memes are funny. Uh -huh, and this is a comedy show. Um, now let's get back to that uh, preview. Skin that goes. And remember, you can support the working brother on Patreon for just a dollar a month, cheaper than your Netflix subscription. It's around <laughs> the whole ship that's like, you know, three or five meters wide. 
um, that's going to slow down any contact drone <laughs> that's coming on like, the surface. Like, you know what like, I mean? like a big, like inflatable, like a big inflatable, like tube or something around the boat. Basically or like, like yeah, like a raft that inflates or a tube that inflates around the boat at a perimeter of like, you know, three to five. And this is like me talking uh, off the top of my head here. Right. Right. You know right. what I mean? This is, this yeah. Is, yeah. This is not something I've thought about before, but just like, just, to have an inflatable raft like that that goes around the whole ship will already provide a certain level of defense. You know what I mean? And that's not that's not to talk you about. You know like, what you I know, mean? Um, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I figured. Yeah. Um, there, there's a there's a lot of other good uh, parts to that. So yeah, check that out. Also check out uh, Hawkins Lives on telegram and uh, find drago as well on telegram and on the info bricks uh, links down below now let's get back to drago's uh, articles we did uh, the kiev junta ah. <laughs> um <laughs> well i mean we might be laughing but the ukrainian soldiers certainly aren't well I don't think they're laughing, but I think they understand the, like, you know, it, the, like, if it's gallows humor, man, like this whole yeah. show is based on gallows humor, you know, like yeah, we're, we're like we're on the verge of nuclear Armageddon. So we're all getting well, hung. I'm going to laugh about it. You guys can cry yeah. if you feel like it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but on, on the side of Ukrainian soldiers being afraid of Sirsky, man, why don't you explain it to people? I'll keep my mouth shut. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I, I don't think there's a lot to say except the guy is called the butcher by his own troops. And, and it's not because he is butchering the enemy, you know, just so you know, for anyone who doesn't know. Um, it's it's just insane that, that this guy is in power anywhere, you know. And uh, th this to me is just a, a proof that the Kiev regime doesn't give a damn about actual victories. They actually care only about these PR victories and optics, you know, uh, stuff that are going to that are going to give them, you know, more money from the from their Western uh, overlords, and uh, you know, which they can, I guess, um, legally acquire and then legally transport or transfer to all these offshore zones where they're used for humanitarian purposes, I guess. Um, uh, ridiculous jokes aside, this guy has been um, an absolute disaster, you know, for the Ukrainian military. And it's not just in the SMO, you know, he's been around since, you know, 2014, 2015, uh, when he sent a bunch of soldiers uh, to the uh, area called the Baltzival where he lost a bunch of, you know, men, a few thousand soldiers to the DNR militia. So we're not talking about professional Russian soldiers. We're talking about, you know, uh, civilians who took up arms to defend their homes, you know, from, from, the, from this neo-Nazi, I mean, the fans of, you know, the new nuts, um, from these guys. And, uh, you know, these guys obliterated, uh, you know, Sierski's troops, um, and then, you know, essentially the, you, you, put, you, you pit the same guy against, the, you know, the Russian military, the professional Russian military, you know, the, the, the result is going to be as, at least as equally disastrous as it was uh, almost 10 years ago. Um, did you hear that the uh, Ukrainians got an Oscar? Um, that's my favorite um, news from last week. I'm, I'm I'm recycling it. I already put it up with the talk with Matt last last talk that I did, but I'm recycling it with you. We lost Avdiivka and Bahmut, but we got Oscars for Mariupol. <laughs> it's, it's insane. You know, now that you mention Oscars, I I saw this weird news on Zero Hedge where there was this Ukrainian porn star, as they say now, uh, who uh, had a photo shoot with you know disabled veterans of the Ukrainian army. And you know, it's, it's it, it was supposed to be like I, I don't know what it, what it was supposed to be, but it looks sad, you know, really, really sad because she's around, you know, she's going around these soldiers, and and they have no damn legs and then arms and you know like uh, some no comment, man, no comment. This is a PG rated a show, man. Just 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 drop it. Um, yeah. I'll give you something to talk about that's not so not crazy. Um, well, everything we talk about here, I mean, we joke about here is controversial, yeah. but this is, this is not so much a joke. Um, 
yesterday or ongoing is the anniversary of the um, ethnic cleansing of Serbs from Kosovo or the pogrom. Um, this image is uh, courtesy of uh, Stay Serbian, I believe. Um, they did a little video, but I didn't get a chance to download it from Instagram to share with you people. But Drago, why don't you, because you're more of like a journalist than I am. I'm just like uh, somebody here. Um, why don't you actually tell people what uh, happened uh, 20 years ago in uh, yeah, the Serbian uh, province of Kosovo? Uh, at the time, uh, approximately 60,000 Albanian civilians, um, quotation marks, obviously, most of them were actually veterans of the, the terrorist uh, UJK or OVK, I'm not sure, like KLA, actually, it's English, in English, it's the Kosovo Liberation Army, which was this Al-Qaeda-connected, um, NATO-supported um, terrorist organization. I mean, I'm not even saying this, you know, be, uh, uh, by... Uh, uh, the Americans themselves have actually, uh, you know, um, called them a terrorist organization. It, it was on the list of their terrorist, terrorist organizations until 1998, if I'm not mistaken. So, you know, it's, it's not just like Serbian propaganda or something. This was a thing that happened uh, over 25 years ago. So these people in, I mean, people um, in 2004, they uh, were... They attacked uh, the whatever remained of the Serbian population in Kosovo, especially in the in the southern part, um, and they essentially driven out uh, around four thousand people. Uh, Nine hundred people were um, brutally, um, let's say, tortured and uh, beaten. And I'm not sure if it was a hundred or something who were killed, or even more. I forgot the number of of killed, but there were around thirty five uh, Serbian churches and monasteries were destroyed. Um, Thousands of houses were burned down. And the crazy part is there was around 30,000 NATO uh, K-4 officers who were, most of them from NATO, of course, uh, who were just looking at all this and not doing anything. They were not even trying to protect the Serbs who were living there. And, and the only Serbs who actually managed to survive all this were Serbs who were armed, you know, Serbs who actually had some sort of weapons to defend themselves. Those people were not touched by the Albanian extremists. Because, of course, you know, they knew that, that, that these guys were, would puff fire back. But all those who had no, you know, means of defending themselves, uh, their lives were essentially destroyed. You know, they were uh, they were left with nothing and they ended up in Serbia. You know, I mean, of course, Serbia helped them. But, uh, you know, it's not the same when somebody's helping you. It's not, you know, it's, it's a lot different when you actually lose everything you have and your life is just turned upside down. And, you know... The, to top it off, uh, they actually, the Albanians destroyed the cemeteries of Serbs so they couldn't return, you know, and every time when the Serbs would come to, you know, to um, to visit those cemeteries, uh, you know, more and more of those um, would be destroyed. And, uh, you know, people didn't even have, you know, a place to go back to where they could, you know, light candles for, for their deceased. So it's, um, you know, it just shows you what kind of people they are. I mean, the the perpetrators. Yeah. Serb propaganda. That's what it used to be yeah. called on CNN back in the day when I was a child. Um, and I was living abroad as followers or close followers would know. I lived in the Middle East and was uh, a Muslim killer by default because I was Serb. Yeah. Um, got another meme. A classic, back from those days, the good old 90s. Today's generation has no clue there are two people in this picture. Um, for those have no clue, it's a Lewinsky joke. Google Monica yeah. Lewinsky. And uh, fun fact for all the Serbs who might be watching and don't know, um, the day the Monica Lewinsky scandal broke was the day that most bombs were dropped on Serbia. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. And as Bill Clinton said, I did not have sex with that woman. <laughs> uh, yes. Yes, he did say that. He did not have sex with that woman. Um, yeah. we did she was doing the, it all by herself. She was just uh, <laughs> being a president. 
Oh, uh, you know what? It, wait, okay. No, I, I, I just don't want to go into it because you know she was 19 at the time, and uh, yeah. she was an intern, I believe, and then she wrote a book and so on and so forth. And uh, well, I think man, the stories, geez. I think the stories of them knowing each other from even younger, from yeah, the Clinton Foundation. But let's so let's I, not I go guess, into uh, it. Let's let's just not go into it. Man. I just, just want to mention just, uh, an island, you know, where they went to. Uh, I guess just uh, sunbathing. The sunbathing island. Yeah. We'll get us a content warning. This is a good segue to I was going to I was going to I was going to say the last uh, the last upload a, about aliens it got a content warning from Wikipedia number 1. Oh, wow. Um so like you know, YouTube is paying attention to the working brother. That's for sure. Um Watch the uh, watch the last episode. It was a good talk with uh, Matt. We talked aliens. Yeah, I, I, did. I did. Not you, not you. I'm saying you know people who might oh. be new here. Because more than half of you are not subscribed. Why are you not subscribed? Why? Why do you watch if you're not subscribed? Click the subscribe button or just don't watch. Like make my life easier. Um, <laughs> Aliens, UFO doc trailer, blah, 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 blah. This was like 47 minutes ago, two views and four likes. What? <laughs> you know, is YouTube playing with my numbers? It might be. What do you think, Drago? Do you think censorship in our world exists? No, oh, no, no way, man. Like, Conspiracy theories, um, Russian propaganda. <laughs> I mean, it's Russian propaganda, man. Those are the, the freest platforms uh, online. Ukraine versus Europe, grain fight escalates. Dun, dun. It's like Mortal Kombat, only in grain. Uh, excuse the motorcycle retards in the background. Um, and excuse me offending retards, but that's the old speak for mentally re like undeveloped people. Um, Kiev's rift with neighbors widens as it continues flooding you with cheap grain. Yeah, I saw that. There was like the tractor people like the farmers of Europe. Yeah, I think it was in Poland. They even blocked their like rail. <laughs> like they yeah. blocked the road for like a week and then they blocked the rail. Tell us, tell us about it, Drago. <laughs> you know, the, the craziest part for me is that Poland keeps like working closely with the United States. However, like they're not checking the data on who owns the vast majority of, or at least like uh, um, a large chunk of Ukrainian ar arable land. So, you know, they should check if, if, it's most, if it's these American corporations such as BlackRock, you know, um, they should check it because those people are the ones who are flooding, you know, Europe with cheap grain. It's Black almost Rock? as if they want to destroy Ukraine, uh, they want to destroy European agriculture so that they can move in and take over the market. But I guess, you know, claiming that would be a conspiracy theory. So I, I definitely not, don't, don't condone that. So you're, you're crazy, man. You're crazy. Yeah. You're, you're saying the BlackRock, which has bought up most Ukrainian grain and other companies such as is, is intentionally flooding the European market with cheap Ukrainian grain. So as I'm in order to I'm, like, I'm, not condoning it. I, I'm just saying that I've heard from these crazy conspiracy theorists that this could be a possibility, which of course is insane. I on mean, the metro, I, I you're saying you heard it on the metro, on the on the subway, yeah, some yeah. like crazy drunk guy came to you in Belgrade yeah. and he told you this theory. Yeah, yeah, like 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 I was, you know, I was trying to get away from him, but he kept following me and you know giving me a list of these companies which are you know uh, flooding the you know European markets with cheap grain, and you know. Uh, and also, like, I want to condemn uh, the uh, Hungarian Prime Minister Orban, who's, like, protecting his country from this. I'm not sure, like, is he crazy? Is he a conspiracy theorist? Why would he, you know, refuse cheap grain? I mean, it's isn't it better, you know, to destroy your own agriculture and give all these American cor freedom and democracy corporations, you know, the, the dominance in your market? You know, they just want to help the, Ukra the, the Hungarian and all these other, you know, European peoples. Um, I'm an economist by trade. And uh, that sounds like uh, like not not like you know you're crazy man, like yeah. even economic theory doesn't doesn't support what you're saying. Um, also, I used to be a project manager at some time. Shout out to any of my former bosses who might be watching secretly. Um, Paralutes to say how's the project going and gets promoted to project manager. A non-political meme for a change. Yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, Drago, do you miss the office? Uh, yeah. Of course. Yeah, huh? Can't live without it. Um, we've reached the meme news segment. Uh, this was shared by a subscriber uh, who who is also a friend. But the point is, Kate, no, we haven't seen her. Us? We're just burying a tree. Planting! We're planting a tree. Not burying anything, no. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear about this? Yeah. She's I, missing. I because of all that, uh, like, um, Photoshop controversy um, and that she hasn't been seen in some time. I don't know, man. Um, the UK uh, royal family is um, weird. <laughs> weird is one way to put it. Um, yeah. From from uh, what's it called? Transylvania is another way to put it. Um, <laughs> in any case, Who knows? maybe they own some, you know, estates there. Who knows? So. They do. They do. Uh, yeah. Russia continues to win. Against yeah. top NATO to lose gear. Forward, you mean? To lose forward, it's falling forward. It's not. It's not yeah. walking. It, the, did you know that actually walking is falling forward, and that's why yeah. like that 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 like you know segue type of like thing with wheels it works like by sensing like when you lean forward it thinks you're like it's falling and that's how, like that's how it works. Anyway, that's Russia continues to win. Um, meanwhile, NATO is going. Ah. No, tell us. Tell us what actually it says. Well, in the I, I covered article. a lot of stuff in this article. I covered the destruction of new patriots and HIMARS systems. Um, they got denazified, I guess, or um, the fans of nuts uh, stuff, whatever you want to call it. Um, and they've destroyed, I think, four. Demilitarized. They got demilitarized. They got yeah, demilitarized. demilitarized. They got demilitarized uh, from long range. And if I'm not mistaken, the the crews on these systems were not ukrainians so i guess um you know freedom and democracy is finally getting a taste of its own medicine even on a tactical level let's say um so and of course in order to hide all these um all, all this russian losing forward you know uh the Kiev regime launched the belgorod attack and also to disrupt the you know uh, the election and, you know, present Putin as not having the authority to defend the country, blah, 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 you know, all these other things that they think would be, they would, they would achieve with these attacks. Um, however, you know, what, what actually happened, it actually backfired completely because, you know, people just rallied around Putin. So, uh, and also they lost a bunch of guys by trying to attack the Belgorod area. They didn't really take anything and they lost, if I'm not mistaken, on that day, 1,500 guys, 500 of whom, whom got killed. So, you know, uh, I guess they should keep trying. As I said, you know, keep attacking Russia, keep launching drones at Russia, see what happens. No comment, man. These people are like delusional. Um, a twist on Plato's cave, Plato's rave. <laughs> Books I didn't read on Instagram. Um, it's hilarious. Um, Another, another, another good one. I think it's theirs too. Yes, one must imagine Sisyphus happy. Albert Camus, <laughs> the absurdist. Um, do you like Camus or Kemi, as he's called in Serbian? Well, yeah. I mean, he's not bad. I guess I haven't read anything since high school, so. Well, I yeah, obviously. I, I don't. I don't think he's written anything new since high school. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> Yeah. Unless he's a member of the British royal family, which I really don't know anything about. So. Um. Yeah. Let's let's do another one. Uh, why was uh, Why was Pavlov's hair so soft? Because he conditioned it. <laughs> oh, I want to oh, bring your attention. Killed on, on my psychology classes when I was in high school. Um. Yeah, I think that's enough of those. Let's do the last article that you sent. Neo-Nazi junta. Dun, dun. Again, the fans of nuts of the new age, junta, and NATO divert attention from losses by attacking Transnistria. This is today's yeah. article, March 18th, as we record this. Not live. Yeah. This is not live. This is just the premiere. Don't get excited. I'm uh, not in the chat, most probably. But you can 
play in the chat and make friends and leave comments. That drives the algorithm. Thank you. Um, like, share, subscribe, Patreons. Thank you. All that good stuff. Okay, Drago, sorry. You were saying something? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was just about to say that I'm pretty sure a lot of people have heard, if not most already, that on uh, March 17th, that is yesterday, there was an attack on, on a Transnistrian military base where one MI uh, or Mi-8 MT helicopter was destroyed. Um, by a drone that came from the direction of Odessa. So I guess the Kiev regime has nothing to do with it. It was just a drone that materializes itself, you know, from that area. So it has nothing to do with the Kiev regime. So uh, jokes aside, they, they're the ones who, you know, fired the drone, obviously. Uh, so, um, you know, what I actually, you know, uh, contemplated in this, uh, article is that they want to escalate in, in Transnistria and and NATO is supporting them and it seems to be that France is the one that, that's pushing this. Um, so what's really going on, if, if they can uh, escalate in Transnistria, then they could defeat Transnistria because it's, you know, it has a, a couple of thousand soldiers, um, a few hundred Russian soldiers as well. And it's, this area is not connected directly to uh, Russia, so you know it's, it's very difficult to get any reinforcements. Uh, and that's a good way, you know, to inflict a tactical defeat on Russia and also divert attention from you know all the winning that Ukraine is having in in the Donbas, you know, and with the Russians losing forward and everything. So um, it is a danger, you know, it is a present danger because um, NATO also wants to get to Odessa and Transnistria stands in their way. You know, in that way, if if they somehow take control of Moldova, which, you know, they've done for the most part, uh, and if they take Transnistria, it's, you know, it's 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 one, two, two birds with one stone. They inflict, inflict a defeat on Russia and they get, you know, a, an undisputed area that is going to be connected to the Odessa region, which is, of course, is strategically important for NATO and Russia and everyone else, essentially. So uh, this is the gist of the article. Uh, who's interested in, in details, like, they can read it. Yeah. What can I say, man? Um, they're asking for trouble, to put it lightly. Yeah. Pretty much. Yes. And the Russians have ways in which they can respond. Like they can launch long range missiles. They can use the, their air force to, um, you know, support the, the Transnistrian uh, military and their own soldiers there. However, you know, it's, it's a big question how long they can withstand. However, there's one caveat. Uh, there's this gigantic Soviet-era depot, arms depot, or an ammunition depot, if you want, there. And if that thing's, thing blows up, it's, it's going to be, you know, fireworks for the entire Europe, essentially. So It's not only that. Apparently, there's enough, like, uh, ammo stored there to run World War II for, like, a week or, like, something like that. Or a month, yeah. or it's like some ridiculous amount of, of ammunition, like is is stored there. Like when you say huge, you mean like epic scale, like awesome, like yeah. the true meaning of awesome, like inspires I, I all. <laughs> a few hundred, um, you know, train cars of ammunition were there, as far as uh, I was able to realize from an interview that uh, former Russian general Lebed uh, said, and I think in 1995 or something like that. And, um, you know, we could say that some of that ammo has been removed from there, or maybe hasn't, I don't know. Um, I guess it's, it's, an, it's a military secret, but either way, it's, it's a massive amount of explosives. And if that were to, to blow up, it, it's going to be bad for whoever lives there. And, and you'll, get, you'll get naysayers going, oh, that's ammo that's like 50 years old. But we all saw that video of Prigozhin in the salt mine in solidar with those tommy guns that were preserved like they were made yesterday from 1940 yeah. something and and like those were import tommy guns and i'm sure they had a lot more other stuff uh, set up there just in case exactly exactly so you know that the soviet union had this doctrine of never you know getting rid of anything you know like stockpiling reserves of previous uh, military tech that could be used you know to arm, you know, massive amounts of soldier, massive numbers of troops. And, you know, it, it's just the, the Soviet doctrine was such that they really, really have uh, loads and loads of weapons and, and ammunition. Um, like you said earlier, just keep attacking Russia, see what happens. Um, let's uh, close out with Dank Serbia of Vaskrsenje, cause and effect simple. Gavrilo Princip shooting Franz Ferdinand. 
Everyone declaring war on everyone. World War One, World War Two, nuking Japan, hentai. <laughs> <laughs> Cause and effect. <laughs> I never so thought about Gargoyle causing hentai. <laughs> if you're a fan of hentai, you're the de facto fan of Gavrilo Princip. That is today's yeah. takeaway. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna play some music. Uh, Drago, is there anything you want to say while we uh, close out this talk? I, I guess, you know, um, don't read any uh, alternative media because you're just gonna get, uh, you know, caught up in all these conspiracy theories, just continue getting your news from all the trustworthy sources that you're getting usually, so. And if your uh, content that you're watching has a warning, probably like this one, then you know that for a fact it is comedy, that it has not been understood properly. By the way, we're seeing footage of the second minute of flight uh, in Donetsk airport when I was there in November of uh, 22, I think. Yeah, 22, I think. Um, yeah, there's Texas and I. In any case, everybody who's stuck around to the end, thank you for sticking around. Thank you, John Wu, for the music that you're hearing in the background. Uh, Drago, thank you for coming on, sharing news, discussing these memes. Crucial information we're getting here. Um, everybody who supports the show, thank you again. Uh, everybody who's stuck around, We'll uh, be back. See you soon.